Right, so in this video we're going to carry on talking about solving simultaneous linear equations using algebra. Uh, but in this particular video it's slightly trickier because we've got two equations and we need to manipulate both equations in order to work out values of x and y. So if you have a look at the previous video then that will give you an introduction to this particular one. Or you can visit mathsrap.co.uk and that will give you quite a lot of information and also some downloadable worksheets to have a go at. Um, or you can have a look at the YouTube channel and subscribe to YouTube and that will also give you access to all the videos as well. Okay, so with simultaneous linear equations, uh, we're in a position where we're presented with two equations and they would like us to solve, in other words, to find out the values of x and the values of y. Okay, so in this particular example, it's a little bit trickier, so I'm just going to copy it from my notes here. And I've got 6x plus 2y equals minus 3. Don't like minus numbers, not very helpful, so we'll have to do something about that. Um, also, we've got 4x minus uh, 3y equals 11. Oh, okay. Well, that's going to be a little bit tricky to solve because what we need to do is to find a way of manipulating the equations so that we can get rid of either the x terms or the y terms. And if we get rid of them, it means that whatever's left will be able to then solve, i.e. find out a value for x or a find out a value for y. Okay, so uh, if I look at these equations, what I can do is that um, if I multiply the top equation by 3, that means that this positive 2y will become positive 6y. So that's okay, I can deal with that, because if I multiply the bottom equation by 2, I then will have a negative 6y. And if I add those equations together, it means I can get rid of the y terms. So when you're solving uh, these types of equations, you need to really have a good look and see if you can work out in advance what you can do to the equations in order to isolate and get rid of terms. Okay, um, I think the other thing is that uh, it's always very useful to work down the page as well and make sure your equals remain in the middle of the page. If you have a look at my algebra videos, it'll tell you quite a bit about that. Okay, so uh, it's common convention. What most people do is they will uh, number the equations. I'm going to call the first equation 1, second equation 2. Okay, so with equation 1... I'm going to multiply that by 3. Okay, so if I multiply the equation 1 by 3, 3 times 6 is 18x. 3 times positive 2y is positive 6y. And 3 times minus 3. Now, I may mentioned before about negative numbers. You've got to be a little bit careful with negative numbers, always to make sure that you do the correct thing with them and make sure that you apply all the different rules of multiplying negative numbers together. So 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Okay, so I'm, as I'm going through this, I'm checking my work and making sure that I'm as accurate as I can be for this calculation. So I've now created a, an equation which is the direct equivalent of this one. All I've done is I've multiplied each of the terms by 3. So with equation 2, I'm then going to multiply that by 2. So 2 times 4x is 8x. 2 times negative 3y is going to be negative 6y. And 2 times 11 is 22. Okay, well that's looking a little bit easier to deal with because now what I can do is I can add these equations together. It is very important that you look also at these terms because what I've got here, in order to get rid of positive 6, 
and negative 6. It's a bit like I've got a uh, positive 6 here, and there's my 0, and there's my negative 6. And if I add those two together, I'm going to end up with a 0. Um, it's going to cancel everything out, in other words. So I've got this here. If I add them together, I've got 18x plus 8x, which is going to be 26x. I've got positive 6 added to negative 6. So if I do that, I end up with 0. There's, there's nothing left. And then here I've got negative 9 added to 22. So negative 9 is down here. There's negative 9. And I'm going to come up 22 jumps, if you like, and I'm going to end up with positive 13, which is pretty handy because if I divide 26x, or if I divide 26 this side, and 26 that side in order to get my value of a single x I can tell from looking at this that it means that the value of x will be 13 over 26 which if you reduce it is one half okay with a lot of the GCSE type questions that you get at this sort of level you know you're on the right lines if you get a relatively straightforward answer. Um, if you start getting answers which are to five or six decimal places, the chances are you might not be doing it quite right, so it's well worthwhile checking. Um, likewise, if you find that the uh, values that you're getting just don't seem to fit together particularly well, then it's worthwhile going back to the beginning and checking through. And the advantage of using this type of system is you can always follow your reasoning through each of the steps and also you can demonstrate to the examiner that you've come up with a value of x equals a half through some fairly um, set steps through the calculation. So I've got x equals a half, well that's great because now what I can do is I can substitute that half into pretty much any of these equations that I can choose. So I'm going to substitute, and I'll write it on the margin, so I substitute x equals a half into, oh, um, let's have a look at, well if I put it, it doesn't really matter, but if I put it into equation 2, I know a half times 4 is 2, so it's an easier number to deal with. Likewise, I know if I put it into there, a half times 6 is going to be 3. That's also fairly easy to deal with. But the big advantage is it's got a positive in there. Um, so I can deal with that. Oh, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. We'll put it into 1. All right. So if we put it into 1, we've got 6x plus 2y equals negative 3. Okay. So if x is a half, then that means 3 plus 2y equals negative 3. Okay, so I've now got uh, 2y here, positive 3 here, negative 3 here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides of the equation. Now if I do that, I'm going to be left with 2y equals negative 3 take away negative 3 is going to be negative 6. So therefore, dividing both sides by 2, it means that y equals minus 3. So I now have a value of x, which is a half, and a value of y, which is negative 3. Um, in order to prove it, I can then substitute these numbers back into the equations. Um, so I'll just do it very briefly. So if I look now at equation 2, just to, just to check that everything's correct, x equals a half, so... Um, I'm just going to look like that. So if x equals a half, then that will be 2, because 4 times a half is 2. Take away 3 times minus 3 is going to be um, positive. It's going to be 
minus three, but it's going to be in bracket. Sorry, minus nine, but it's going to be in brackets. So this is where you've got to be a little bit careful with these sorts of uh, equations because what I'm doing is, if you forget the negative at the moment, I've got three times minus three. Well, three times minus three is minus nine. Okay, so three times minus three is minus nine. And it's very useful in these just to put it into brackets, just to make sure that you remember. And that's going to equal um, 11. And there it is. Okay, now, so I'm now left with two minus minus nine. Well, two minus minus nine is two plus nine, and two plus nine equals 11. Therefore, I know I must be correct that x equals a half and y equals negative 3. I appreciate that was quite a tricky one to follow. Um, if you visit MathsRap, there are lots of examples on there. Or you can have a look at the video again. Please stop the video um, and hopefully it will be helpful to you to work through in each of these individual stages. Um, please do post, pin, tweet this video. Um, also, you can subscribe either to the YouTube channel or through the site at mathsrap.co.uk. Um, if you found it helpful, please also add a comment below. Uh, leave a comment for me and I'll do my level best to respond to you. I uh, hope it's been okay and I'll look forward to seeing you inside.